opportunity to dedicate some young children to the Lord. And if you are around here on Sundays regularly, um, if you also come on Wednesday night and you're here during the week, you know that little people run this joint. They are everywhere. The next generation is strong at Bethel. Uh, there's a, and some of you have personally contributed three, four, five, six to that number, and we thank you for that. We have a lot of kids. We have a lot of kids on any given Sunday. There's 100, 150 kids that come through here that are in our ministries on Wednesday night, another big group. We have lots of babies at Bethel. Uh, lots of little ones, and it's such a wonderful thing when we have the opportunity to dedicate children to the Lord. And we, we practice dedication. Uh, this is different than baptism, as most of you know. We did baptism a couple weeks ago where uh, individuals who were old enough to make a decision for Christ and decided they wanted to make that public confession of their faith. Uh, aligning with Scripture, we went ahead and we baptized them. But we see a very different precedent in Scripture when it comes to young children. Uh, they were never baptized in the Bible, not till they were older and they made a decision. But what we do see in Bible times is parents, both in the Old and New Testament, bringing their child to be dedicated to the Lord. The recognition is very simple that God gives us gifts and children are a gift from the Lord. Uh, and parents who love Jesus are dedicating that child back to the Lord for his purposes. Because the best thing that your child or my child or any child or you or I could ever do was to accomplish the purpose for which God created us. Uh, and that's what ch children dedication, baby dedication is all about. It's mom and dad committing and dedicating themselves as well as their child to the Lord. We had uh, three Three dedications uh, this morning. We had one, two in first service. Um, Chris and Lindsay Longo dedicated their daughter, Ella. Uh, we also had, um, yeah, Ella. What a beauty, huh? That picture is unbelievable. Uh, Eric and Jen Carroll dedicated Jack. Jack is all about the hair. Uh, that is outstanding. That is awesome. That is incredible. Uh, we had a great time. A lot of family here. First service. Uh, second service today, we only have one, but she's going to say we saved the best for last. Whatever. So I want to welcome Maddie and Lori Bland. Uh, you know Maddie and Lori as they direct our worship team and the musicians and everything up here. And maybe about six weeks ago, little Austin came on the scene Carter has a sucker, so he'll be good. And uh, there, yeah, Carter, what's up, buddy? He's all smiles. He's excited. Carter spends more time on this stage than anyone here. Anyone here, including myself, he is on this stage all the time. Carter, how you doing? You good? Mm-hmm. He's golden. So, little, oh, that's good. That's a solid pick, Laura. I will give you that. And you never disturb a sleeping okay. baby. So, what a cutie. What a cutie. The Bible tells us children are very dear to our Heavenly Father. Jesus even corrected his disciples when they tried to keep the children away from him. In Matthew 19, 14, he says, Let the little children come to me, and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. Children are a gift. Psalms 127.3 says, Behold, children are a gift of the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. We know kids are a gift, and gifts sometimes have strings attached. When God gives us this gift, we definitely have some strings attached. God has given you the precious gift of children, and with that, Matt and Lori, he gives you an awesome responsibility. God has given you the responsibility to train up your children in the ways of God, to be an example of Christian living, both inside and outside the home, to provide for, to protect, to nurture, to make them a part of your family and share your love and your time and your life with them. Most of all, to teach them to love the same Jesus that you love, to serve, to obey, to honor him with all their heart. Fortunately, you're not alone in this responsibility. God, your heavenly Father, is always with you to provide you strength, encouragement, love. He provides for us everything that we need when we go to him. And you also have this church body. Church, we have a responsibility. The old expression says it takes a village. We are the village. 
We, we are the ones who Austin and Carter are going to look at. They're going to watch how we love God. They're going to watch how we worship. They're going to watch how we praise the Lord. They're going to watch how we pray. They're going to watch us around the altar. They're going to watch and listen to how we talk and speak about one another. As we do all these things, these young, these young minds are absorbing it and soaking it in. So we have a responsibility as well. This morning, we're dedicating Austin to the Lord, but even more importantly, once again, we're dedicating the parents, Maddie and Lori. So Matt and Lori, by coming up here this morning, you as parents are publicly saying that you want to raise your child in a Christ-honoring home, and you're asking God's blessing on your ministry as Christian parents. Listen as I ask you some questions, and in answering these questions, you're making promises, not to me, not even to your children so much, but to God. So if you're willing to commit your children to God and dedicate yourself to raising them in his strength for his honor and glory, then reply to the following promises by saying, I will. Will you do that? Yeah. I will. See, good. All right, that was a test. That was a test run. So here we go. Will you recognize your child as a gift from God and give God thanks for blessing your life with his gift? Will you pledge as Christian parents that you will bring up your child in a Christian home looking to God for wisdom, strength, and guidance? Yeah. You don't start yet, man. Hang in there. We got like another minute. Will you promise to give your child every possible benefit of home, school, and the church? Will you promise to pray for your child? on a regular basis, realizing that it is only with God's hand upon their life that they can be truly blessed. I will. Will you ask God's blessing upon the life of your child to guide, guard, and direct them through all their years? I will. And will you then dedicate your child to the Lord who gave you your child? I will. If your heart was in these promises, then you have dedicated yourself to raising a child that God can use mightily in his kingdom. You're so spoiled. Right. <laughs> He's happy. So we're going to pray for this little guy. Church, would you pray with me? Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the gifts that you give us. And Lord, little Austin is such a gift. God, I thank you for his life. I thank you for his health. I thank you, Father, that your hand is on his mom and dad, and as they are striving to serve you more and more, Lord, that their children are seeing the power, the glory, the love of Jesus Christ shining through them. Lord, I pray a blessing not just on Austin, but on Carter as the big brother, and Lord, on mom and dad as they seek you. Father, I pray that you give them strength. I pray that you give them direction. I pray, Heavenly Father, that your hand would be upon this family and that you would bless him mightily. We thank you for little Austin, and we thank you for that binky. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you.